Hi there, I'm Jamie Keat and welcome to Teachers Tech where I explore technology weekly. And this week I'm exploring Google Drive. I wanna give you seven tips to help you get more out of your Google Drive experience. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button if you think this has been helpful. So let's get started on these seven tips today. Tip number one, use the OCR. So what is OCR? Optical character recognition. How do you use it? Well, I have four different files here and I have a PDF and a couple images and I'm just gonna go ahead and open them and it's gonna convert them to text. With the images, I can edit them, but I'm gonna show you how it grabs the information uh, just inside Google Drive. So let's start with the PDF here. You can see it's a .pdf, PDF format. If I just simply right click on it, and go open with Google Docs, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open it in Google Docs, but it now what it's gonna be is something I can edit. So all of this information, I can go ahead and change it. So if someone gave you a PDF and you think, well, I wanna take the information without retyping everything, just go open with Google Docs and it will give you uh, the information and save you some time. Next, I, let's say I went to the photocopier and I had a test I wanted to uh, copy. So here's a math test, I'll just open real quick. This is PDF through here, I can't edit it. But uh, to save some time, what I can do is right click on it and I can go open with Google Docs again and it's gonna pull out, uh, pull out the words uh, to the best of its ability. And I will we'll admit it doesn't come out perfect but it can save you time still because as long as you get a good scan of it, it can pull out many of the words, images and formulas not so much. But again, you can put that again uh, back in. But so you can see how it did pull out the different words of it. So you'll have less to type and you can go through and do some edit. Uh, the last one I want to show you is just an image here. So with the image, I just took this picture on my phone and I'll just open it up. So this is just an image right here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to right click on it, right click on it. And I'm going to go to opening Google Docs and it's going to go through and it can take out the characters and put it into Google Docs where I can edit. Again, depending on how good the picture it is, uh, we'll change the how well it does uh, change it into its uh, edit uh, format. So this you can see as it opens up, it will put the picture right up here and you can kind of compare uh, the differences to uh, how well. So if you do take a picture of something using your Google Drive, use the OCR and quickly pull that information and then do some edit to make it look better after. The next thing I wanna show you working inside of this is the search capabilities. So if we go uh, to search for something, and I'm gonna use this, <clears throat> excuse me, use this picture here as an example, you can see, uh, let's take out a phrase, glue the pictures. So I'm just gonna go over here and type glue the pictures. So if you're looking for something you took a picture of, I put glue in pictures, it's found it in this one. So it can search through an image and find uh, and find the word. So it can find it, of course, in a document like this where it's uh, in the image and inside the text here too, but it can go through and search the images. So if you quickly need to find something that you took a picture of and it can, it can read the text. The other thing it can do is also, it can recognize the images. So if I, for example, am looking for maybe the Eiffel Tower, and I know that's in here, you can see I have the Eiffel Tower that comes up. It's labeled as picture, it's not labeled as Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, but it recognizes, it recognizes it as the Eiffel Tower. I could do the same thing. I know I have picture of pictures of mountains in here. If I search, it's gonna get me documents with mountains, but it's also gonna get me the images. So this one actually has the word in it as mountains, but you can see these ones over here that it's trying to find which ones would be, could be mountains, D doesn't have that in the tags of it. So uh, I hope you like those first two tips. Let's move on to uh, how to use your mobile phone for taking some, uh, scanning some PDFs. Do you wanna do a quick scan of something and put it into your Google Drive as a PDF? Just use the Google app for, app on your phone. Really easy to do. So I'm, I already have this open here on my phone. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the plus and I'm gonna hit scan now. And I just have a book open here that I'm gonna scan. And if you take better time and have better light, it can come out better, but I'm just gonna scan this for now. 
and it probably won't come out too perfect and again I could play with this but I'm going to hit the check mark if I wanted to redo another one I could just uh, hit the middle button but I'm going to hit the check mark and it gets saved to my Google Drive so now I'm just going to switch back to my Google Drive on my computer and show you it as a PDF so I'm back at my Google Drive here and you can see down below here, I'm just gonna double click and open on this and you can see I didn't take the best picture, but this is a scanned as a PDF. And then the same thing, I can search through this and if you did wanna open it using OCR, just do what I did, showed you before with the open with. So you need to take a quick scan, just use the Google Drive app on your mobile device and it works very simple. Sometimes people like to deal with PDF files. So if you're sending out, rather than sending out a Google Docs or Google Sheets directly, you can send them a PDF file, which makes it easy to print and open in different programs. So let's say I have this Google Docs uh, file right here, and I wanna share this with somebody and I want it automatically to be a PDF when they get the link. So all I have to do is, uh, I'm gonna right click on this, and first of all, you would have to share uh, this with the people uh, that you want to have access with it. So make sure you do share it with the appropriate people here. But after you do that, just go ahead and copy the link. And I'm just going to put it into my URL up here. I'm going to paste it up, uh, up top here. And after that, so you can see, I have to make a slight change to the very end. And I'm going to put this into my uh, description down below. Uh, so you can copy paste it too. But you just need to change the end right here. And I'm going to go back over here and I'm just going to change the very end and I'm going to paste it like so. Now I could email, I could take this whole thing and copy paste it uh, and send it to somebody. And it gives some advantage to this. So if it's a rather large PDF, you don't have to send it through their, um, you don't have to send it through their email. And the nice thing is any change you make in your original Google Doc will automatically, when they click on the link, it will always re download the newest one. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, return here and it's going to download down uh, down below as a p oops, as a PDF here as I open it up I have a PDF document here and like I said with that link change it's always going to download the most recent so any changes you make to your document it's going to when they go back to it it's going to be there so the, just a little tip if you want to work with PDFs and if people like to kind of pass that information like I said some people like it with their printing or just opening up in different applications so now I want to show you how to create a whole new instance of a file or a folder uh, in a quick shortcut just by hitting Shift and Z together. Uh, so let's say if I was working with a f uh, file, so just this image file right here. Now I could copy it, I could right click and just make a copy and I'm going to have two of something. Uh, but this is a little different, you're not creating a copy. So when I hold down Shift, when I click on the file, I hold down Shift and Z, it asks me where I would like to move it. So I'm just going to Go ahead, go ahead and move it. Uh, I'm going to move it to 2017, 18. So I'm just maybe I have something from a year and I want to move it forward. And now, if you notice, it didn't take it away from here. But if I go to here, it's inside. So it created. It didn't really copy it because I'm going to show you how it's connected. If I delete this one now, so if I go remove and I go back to my drive, notice there's only one and I had two of them from the copy before, so they're connected. And what I like, you can do this to an entire folder. So let's say for an example, uh, I had the uh, a whole year, well, this should be 2016, 17, but let's say I want this 2016, 18 inside my 17, 18 uh, folder. So what I can do is create a, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna hold down shift and then Z and I'm gonna move it or add, sorry, because I'm not actually moving and I'm just creating another instance of it. So I'm going to go to uh, my other year here and add. And it's still here, but inside here, everything is also here. So all the files and everything got moved over from inside there. So if you have, let's say, all your previous lessons and lesson plans, and you just want to make it, put it in a new updated folder, that's a quick way to move everything. But remember, it's connected. So if you delete something from one, it's going to delete it from the other one. So maybe you have some sensitive files inside your Google Drive. You maybe you want to share them, but you want to restrict what the access to them, or you don't want people to print them or to be able to share them with other people. So you can restrict uh, your files or folders. So real simply, if I go through and I'm going to right click and just go to share again, when you click on a file like I have now, just make sure you click on advanced here. 
And you can see at the very bottom here, prevent editors from, change, uh, from changing access and adding new people and disable option to download, print and copy for commenters and, and viewers. So you can just simply click those right here and you need to hit save. And then that will really limit to uh, what people can do with the files that you've shared. The other thing is if you had a file or a folder that you wanted to add this to, just again, go to share, go to advanced, and you can see prevent editors from changing access and adding new people here. So if you have some sensitive information, you don't want it to get out everywhere, use this as an option to uh, secure it more. So I like being able to set different files and folders to expiration dates, and it's really easy to do. Uh, so maybe you have a folder for a semester that you're sharing with students, and then at the end you just want to be remembered that it will disappear and they won't have access, or maybe a certain file too. So if I go to a file and I want to set, it, set an expiration date on it, I can just simply go to my share options again and I can add a person on this. So remember you can do groups uh, to the same thing. So I'm just gonna add uh, one of my uh, emails. So I just went out of there. So I'm gonna go back into share and I wanna go to advanced. And you can see this other email, mine is on there. If I hover it over there, I get the little clock. This is where I set the expiration. So I can click on it. You can see I have seven days or 30 days, but I can also set a custom date. I could click on a date and it will, uh, whatever I need to set it as. I can also cancel, cancel the expiration of this too. I can do the exact same thing on a folder. So if I go to a folder and I go to share, and I go to advanced and I can add, I'll just add myself again. And once I add myself and I hover over it, you can see I get the clock. So maybe there's a bunch of files in a folder for a semester you want different people to have access to. And at the end, you just have it expired so you don't have to forget about it. So a handy little tip um, that I like to use in class. So I hope you liked these tips today, these seven tips. Uh, if you had, please hit that like button or share it with a few other people. And remember, I do these weekly tech tips. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any other ideas for any other tips, please write them down below so I can look at maybe creating another video on them. Thanks for watching tonight and I'll see you next time.